and we're back, and you might be like, Mitch, why are you in a totally different location than where you said you were going to meet us? Well, have I got a story for you. So I was backtracking, right? And I got to the clock room, and I figured, why not fight some guardians off screen and go and get healed? And then, you know, that didn't go as I planned. <laughs> uh, I kind of got my ass kicked a little bit. And I had to retreat to find a save room because I didn't want to use up any items. So, I look at the map and I said, well, where's the closest save room without making any new progress on the map? And I realized I had to go all the way to the Coliseum. And I realized, uh -uh, that's not going to happen. So, I took the liberty of coming back over to the entry to underground and I went to the save room over here. You didn't really miss all that much. Uh, also... I have equipped the, um, the Joseph Cloak, and we're going to rock with that for a little bit, even though the Twilight Cloak is slightly better. And for the color scheme for the Joseph's Cloak, you simply go to System, Cloak, Color, you can choose how you color it. I decided to go, since we're playing this for Halloween, I decided to go with a nice pumpkin, uh, you know, orange, two, two orange tones, darker on the outside, lighter on the inside, give it that festive... Uh, a fear to it. So, where to next is probably your question. And that is a good question. Basically, there's a few areas we have left to explore that we have not been to at all. We have not been to the inverted underground caverns, the inverted abandoned mine, and the inverted catacombs, which is all down here. We also have to do the inverted castle entrance and the inverted alchemy lab. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the underground area first. Everything is upside down. And uh, after that, well, we're probably going to go through the abandoned mines, but not the catacombs. I like to save the catacombs for last. And then we're going to go back towards the alchemy lab into the abandoned, uh, I mean, into the entryway. And then we'll come back to the abandoned mines after we've activated the teleporter go into the catacombs, and then after that, it's time to fight the main boss of the game. So, let's press on. Again, we have the a la carte gear equipped, and I'm just doing that mainly so I can get some... see if I can get any fun drops, because some enemies here do actually drop some fun stuff. Okay, so in this room, there's another room with those balloon pods. And in order to save yourself the headache, I really recommend just pop it on the topaz circlet. Because then you can just jump in all those things. Heal yourself if you need to. You probably don't even need to. But it'll just prevent you from getting poisoned, which is annoying. I am also rolling with the Devil Familiar for a little bit. Just to give him a little more experience. Just because he's kind of cool. Whoops. Yeah, it's a little hard to make the climb sometimes, because they're so in the way. But usually you can do a double jump and then get them like that, and then just super jump your way through. Uh, let's see. Um, there we go. I'm going to pick some of these up, because I did get damaged a little bit. Each one only heals two apiece, so it's really not even that useful, I guess. But, hey, you know, some health back is better than no health back. And you might be like, oh, Mitch, that's a very glass half full kind of way of looking at the world. And I know I'm surprised, because I usually don't look at the world that way. <clears throat> Freaking balloon pod. Well, the nice thing is, they pretty much give you back all the health you've lost. There's, just, like, just enough there. They're hitting me for 17 right now. And there's like just enough. Okay, so here is another room with imps. I think there should be a bunch more, I thought. Maybe there's only one? Ooh, what are we in here? An opal? Alright, now one of these rooms has a breakable wall, but this is not the one. Thank you, Mr. Devil Familiar. I knew I kept you around for a reason. Nah, I'd rather keep the Bible, I think. Let me look at the map here. Yeah, everything's upside down. It's a little confusing. There we go. 
take that out. I think we should be pretty much fully healed now at that point. Well, this is always a little awkward jump because you got that Jack of Bones is going to jump right at you. You got to avoid him. All right. Where are we? We are here. And I don't actually want to progress down through here just yet. I want to go back this way and kind of fill out one side at a time, you know? So, um, we're going to drop down this shaft. And then the entrance is on this side. Yes. So this is going to take us back to where we had gone before to fight the Succubus. But obviously we killed the Succubus in the regular castle, so she's not going to be here this time. And I don't remember what takes her place. Heart max up. Nice. It's always a welcome addition. Oh yeah, that's right, this room has like no good coins in it. Take him out. Good. Perfect. I believe these all have meal tickets in them. Yes. Meal ticket. Yep. Meal ticket. Yes. Cool. Oh, okay, that's right. This what's in here is actually there's a peanut in here on the floor and it respawns I think so you can keep coming in here to get an infinite amount of peanuts now as to whether there are peanuts in the room that used to have the succubus in it is as far as being a dirty joke I don't know how well that works in Japanese but I know it works in English and I think it's funny and then this should just be a regular save point Yes. Yes, it is. Awesome. So, well, at least going down is easier than coming up. If I could hit him at an angle, that would be perfect. Nice. Take out him. We'll grab that shuriken, why not? See ya. I've always had... You know me, I don't have good hand-eye coordination at all in life. I could never really... The reason I'm not really that great with this jump kick thing is I just could never land it. I don't know, I'm not... I'm really not good at stuff like that. It's just one of my shortcomings as a person. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's drop back down here. Right, because we gotta continue, of course, this way. Yes. See you there. Oh. Screw it, we'll keep the cross. Why not? We'll use it against the next boss we fight. There's our life max up, and here's our breakable wall. Where we get a diamond, which is kind of useless to us at this point. Mainly because we aren't going to buy anything else. Um, now, if you wanted to save up for the duplicator, because that costs a hell of a lot of money, you could. I don't know why you would want to, in my opinion, because usually by the time you've gotten the duplicator, the game's over. Like, there's no bosses left to fight. You pretty much have beaten the game already. I don't know. I just don't really find it a worthwhile uh, investment of your time, personally. But, if you did want to get the duplicator, your best way to do it is equip the jewel sword, go grind out gems. And the best place to grind out gems is, in my opinion, the main hall where the zombies respawn in the regular castle. You'll just have an easy time there. Because they aren't going to really... You, there's no risk of you dying. They don't do a lot of damage. They infinitely spawn. They're slow enough that the Jewel Sword's delay on its attack animation really isn't a big deal. 
And, uh, you know, after doing that like two million times, you'll have farmed enough zircons, aquamarines, and turquoises to <laughs> hopefully buy the duplicator. And then you'll buy it and you'll realize, why did I waste ten hours of my life doing that? I already beat this game. Now, uh, the duplicator is available for you on, you know, new games without actually clearing the game as long as you've played it once. So I guess you could make an argument that you could buy the duplicator without uh, having to, you know what I mean, with, without having to clear the game to buy it. But, I mean, at that point, you don't even need it. I don't know, I just... I find it to be far too expensive and far too time consuming to even get. So we also aren't going to get it in this playthrough. You probably guess where this is going. Alright, so first off, make sure you break up here. Because uh, a lot of times when I'm playing this from memory, I usually forget that there's a whole other section. And I forget to break that hole in the ceiling and then I'm missing like a good like a 5% game completion and I'm like, what? Also, we have another encounter with our doppelganger. And against him, what I'm gonna do is... I'm not gonna, we'll use the pentagram. That sounds like fun. No, it damages all enemies, coming to effects. Mmm. I think I'm gonna save the bombs. Let's let's equip some throwing items here. Throw two. Uh, oh, you know what? I'll show you what the monster vial does. It summons a skeleton. And it's not really as useful as you would like it to be, unfortunately. But it's a cool idea. I'm gonna take off the Alucard mail. Let's put on the Alucard mail, maybe. Or, no, we'll do the walk armor. Because that's stronger. I'm gonna keep on the Joseph's Cloak. Switch over to the Moonstone. And the Covenant Stone. So yeah, you can have a couple of different skeletons active all at once. Um... Pretty much all they do is they stand there and throw bones. And it's kind of funny that the doppelganger works as the same rule as like the player, where if he touches the skeleton, he gets hurt. I don't know, I just think that's kind of funny. Yeah, we're out of that. Oops. Alright, so let's see here. Monster Vial 2 summons a bat. We'll use that one. Clear up our inventory a little bit. And I think, really, the bat... Well... I guess it wasn't very useful after all. What else we got here that I can throw at him? A block of knife, huh? Oh, did I throw it? Oh, I guess I missed. Yeah, so the throwing weapons... I don't know, I don't personally find their damage to be that worth it. Uh, what else do we got? Javelin. Let's do a throw javelin. Oh, that one, that one did some damage. Alright. Back to the Alucard, there it is. Let's put that. Alucard sword. Where might you be? In this mess of an inventory. Alucard mail. Put on our two rings of Arda. That way it makes it kind of worth it. And we'll continue on. So thankfully this room doesn't fill up with water again. Not that it would be a big issue anyway, because, I mean, we can swim. Alright, now this is an important room for you to remember. Uh, because there is a sword that, uh, alright, so there's a sword that drops from a couple of enemies that's called the Muramasa, and pretty much it's a two-handed, I think it's a two-handed sword, and the way it works is that, um, as it absorbs blood, it increases in power, and you can actually grind that out to be the strongest sword in the game that does 999 damage with each swing, however, why you would actually do that I have no idea. But this is one of the best rooms for grinding that. Uh, mainly because these octopuses bleed. And the best strategy for it 
is to honestly go and get the knife as a sub weapon, equip the lowest damaging, uh, well, not lowest damaging, but pretty much you want to equip whatever you got that's going to lower your intelligence score like crazy, and then spam knives while you have the Muramasa equipped, and it'll, uh, you know, absorb all the blood. So we get the dark sword over here, and this, uh, where is that? It's a sword forged by elves, which I thought we already had, but then I remember there's two swords with that description, I thought. Luminous, too. So, uh, I don't really know what the difference is between the two of them, to be honest. But it's there if you want it. There we go. Yeah, at least we got my amorphosis here. There we go. Let me clear out these octopi. Yes, I do actually know the proper plural for octopus. Oh, son of a bitch. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Come on. Yeah, their ink clouds get a little annoying. I, I mean, if I had a sub weapon, I could at least use that, but I have the cross, and this is not a worthy investment to use the cross. And honestly, what I should be doing is I should have just used a screen clear, but, you know, one of my bombs. But hey, hindsight's 2020, I guess. And these guys, I don't think they actually respawn. I think there's just more than can be... Like, there's m more enemies coded for this room than what can actually show up at one time. So, I think, like, once you kill a bunch, it, re it spawns a bunch of new ones. But you know what? I, I think I am going to show you the cross. Because it is pretty powerful. That was actually a pretty worthwhile use of the cross. I take that back. I'm glad that we used it there. Did I go this way? See, I don't remember. My short-term memory is kicking in hard right now. Alright, let's get out of here. So let's look at this map here. We're about to go uh, into the area that I told you to open up in the ceiling. Also, this is one of my favorite songs in the game, the uh, Lost Painting song. It plays in several areas of the Inverted Castle, and it's slightly different in each area. I don't know, I just like it. Blue Venus Weeds. So we're gonna ignore the water for just the time being, because I want to clear out everything that's horizontal here. Ah, son of a... Ah, son of a bitch. Yeah, so really, with these blue Venus weeds, you don't really even want to let them get started. And the best stuff to use against them, like the regular Venus weeds, is the fire. Anything fire-related. If you got fire brand, use that. Uh, you can use Hellfire, like I just did. We got these cave trolls. We're going to explore the watery areas in a second. But I just want to clear out any enemies that might be on the ground over here, and also uh, proceed into the next area too, as well. Because we have to backtrack through here anyway, so we'll do it on the way back. And here we get Force of Echo, and what this does is while we're in bat form, it actually lets us attack with our Echo. Which is pretty neat. Alright. So now we're going to go explore this area. And pay attention to your map while you do this. Make sure that you're hitting these, the ceiling part of the map while you explore, you know, the water. And for some instances, you're going to actually bump the top and it's still not going to fill in. And what you gotta do then 
is you turn into the dog, or the wolf, and you want to hold down the Y button and kind of swim along the top like this. It looks ridiculous. It is a little ridiculous. It's a little tedious. But, you know, you gotta do it. There's nothing else. Plus, it is kind of comical when the dog does that. The wolf. I don't know why I keep calling it a wolf. There we go. So yeah, keep checking the map, making sure you're hitting all the nooks and crannies that you need to hit. And as you can imagine, we're going to have to do this in the rest of the underground cavern, too. Plus, the other thing is, this will at least keep you away from the blue Venus weeds for a little bit. Because they hurt. They're not very fun. Oh, son of a... Rotten bastard. Alright, let's get this area. Yeah, see, so, like, I bumped the top over here, but it wasn't filled in. So I gotta turn into the wolf, doggy paddle my way around, and keep on going. Just admit, you never thought you'd actually just be here watching some dude you've never met play a video game where he's a wolf swimming across a ceiling. That's why I love video games, because that sentence is applicable in this type of situation. Alright, this might go bad. We're going to see. There we go. That actually worked out pretty well. Alright, that's filled in. Let's make sure we get this last little bit over here. Whoa. Perfect. Bounce our way up. Is there anything up here? I don't think so. Alright, so that's all filled in. Nice. Now we can continue on with the rest of Underground. And I went through there. We're gonna pop into that save room over there just because we took quite a beating from the blue Venus weeds and I would like to heal. Let's press on. Take out that Jack of Bones. Sorry, Mr. Jack of Bones, but your time is up. Grab that. Alright, so the Rock Knights are pretty much just a carbon copy of the Bomb Knights from the Clock Tower. They literally do the same thing. They're really not that much trouble. To go with that killer fish. Again, make sure you're filling in. You see me check the map very frequently during these points in time, and I apologize for that, but I'm making sure that I fill in the map so I don't have to do it later. Whoop. That actually worked better in my head. Him out, don't get hit by that. Give her a taste of some firepower. Didn't really like that, but that's okay. Oh, I apparently triggered the cross and I didn't even mean to. Oh, cool, we got some jeweled knuckles. <laughs> Those have been useful a long-ass time ago. <laughs> Don't really need them right now. Yeah. There you go. Let's do a little super jump here. Get this life max up. There is a... I want to say that's a, an elixir, maybe? Potion. Nice. 
Alright, so jumping up here will take us into the next area. That's where the wooden bridge used to be. But it's not here this time. There we go, let's explore over here. Perfect. I don't know why I did that. I thought maybe there was something there, but there's not. Well, at least you don't have to worry about accidentally triggering the cross now. Ah, okay, so this is another tricky area. You might be like, Mitch, what do I do here? Turn into the dog? <laughs> well, wolf, and swim. And you should be good. Alright, we're gonna ignore that waterfall right now and continue on over here. Get that garnet. And then we want to explore um, the side over here. We could do that as the bat. I just like the super jump because it's fun, number one, and it's a little faster if I can do the input. Here we got a toadstool we can get. And you can actually super jump up the waterfall this time because it's upside down. So the water, it's weird, like, the water physics don't really make a lot of sense. But, hey, what are you gonna do? That's life. Life doesn't make sense. If you're, sti if you're still here, trying to make sense out of the world that we live in and the life that you have, then on you, man, I admire your commitment. I gave it up a while ago. I just accept that some crazy stuff happens, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm gonna turn this into bat, I think. That way you can also appreciate the, uh, <laughs> the bright orange bat. I don't know, it is very Halloween looking, huh? Two tones of orange and some black with a little bit of yellow. Definitely gives that Halloween vibe. Fill in the ceiling there. There we go. This is an instance where you need to turn into the wolf. In order to fill that in. Nice. Neutron bomb. I'll take it. Take him out. Take him him. Another neutron bomb. Nice. Oh, also, uh, remember there was that candle? That drops a thousand. Well, now it's nice and conveniently over there on the floor. So, if you wanted to farm it, you could. Um, it might actually be one of the best ways to get a lot of cash quickly. Now, if you really want to do that 5,000 times to buy the duplicator, by all means, go ahead. I won't stop you. Oh, come on, Alucard, fall. All right. So we're going to press on in just a second, but I unfortunately have to go do something. I will be right back. <laughs> 